going on, Faded Culture? It's Sergio Barron, and we're back again with another haircut tutorial. Today, I got my friend Michelle here, and I'm gonna be breaking down my step-by-step -step process on how to do a mid-skin fade with the scissor trim on top. And that's it, right? Yes. Oh, and before we start, make sure y'all pay attention to the full video, because I will throw out a random code that y'all can use to enter at checkout at fadedculture.co for a chance to win one of our Faded Culture hats or a barber razor. So good luck to the winner. There will be one winner. As soon as y'all hear the code, just go ahead and head over to the website, punch it in at checkout, and uh, congratulations, y'all win either a free razor or a free hat, whichever one of y'all's choice. So with that being said, let's just jump right into, into this tutorial. All right guys, so as always, before doing any sheer work, we wanna dampen our hair just to make our sectioning that much easier. I will be using our very own faded culture shears. These will be releasing here pretty soon, so stay tuned for those. And then I'm gonna grab my first section, probably about a finger with forward from the crown uh, squirrel area. And that's where I'm gonna grab my first section. I am using the fines the fine tooth side of the comb just to better grip the hair and pull it up and all I'm gonna do is cut about a finger in length uh, of, of hair and just make sure that you're moving up about only a finger in width at a time that way you're gonna ensure that you get as even of a cut as possible on top if you start kind of gapping out more than a finger uh, you'll just kind of result in an uneven cut on top so again, just pull up about a finger in length and that's as much as we're gonna trim for this hair, for this haircut. And we're just gonna repeat the exact same process up until we get all the way to the front of the hair. Then here, once you've cut all down the middle, now we're gonna proceed with working on this right side of the head. So you're just gonna kind of pick off a little bit of that section from the middle and then bring your section all the way to the right. And then from there, you'll be able to distinguish your guide. Then we're just gonna match that up to this right side of the head. And again, just repeat the process all the way until you reach the front of the hairline. So now that the right side is matched up with the middle, next we're gonna do the exact same thing, now matching up the left side to the middle. Again guys, just pick up about a finger in length of a section and uh, just match it up to the middle. So just take note that this is about finger length of a trim. It's almost equivalent to using a number six or a seven guard on top. I would say more a seven guard. But now that it's trimmed up all on top, next I'm going to just go around the parietal ridge area or, or the area where the head starts to round out and kind of connect to the top. And I'm going to just go ahead and trim that area as well, all around the head. And a real quick reminder, guys, that we will be doing our first live in-person seminar at the Fort Worth Barber Supply Store uh, here in Fort Worth, Texas, September 18th. So make sure y'all visit uh the eventbrite or y'all could or, or i'll leave a link down in the description so y'all go ahead and purchase y'all's tickets then once you're done with the scissor trim just go ahead and blow dry your hair really well that way we can start our clipper work i'm gonna start with the debulking phase so i'm gonna grab that one and a half clip and i'm gonna open the lever all the way and i'm just gonna debulk right around the area that i know i will be setting in my guidelines this is just to make way uh, to set in my guidelines that way when you're setting them in like with the clipper lever closed and no guard you won't have all this hair hanging over your guides and uh that would just kind of make it hard to see them and so then for our first guide i'm gonna go ahead and use a clipper no guard lever closed and i'm gonna start that first guideline a little or a tad bit under that temple peak area and then i'm gonna just make sure that it slants as i reach the back that way we kind of give off that drop fade effect and then just, just make sure that it ends up in the same position on the opposite side. And then following that up with the clipper, no guard, lever all the way open. Setting in our next guideline coming up about a half inch or about a finger in width up higher than the previous line that we set. And then just make sure that your guidelines are always running parallel to one another. 
Next, I'm going to throw on the number one guard, still keeping that lever all the way open for our next guy length. Again, guys, just come up about a finger in length. You're always gonna wanna make sure that your first guideline is as even as possible, just because your next following guidelines are always gonna run according to that first one. So if that first one is off, then your whole haircut's gonna be off. And you don't want that. Unless you're into that, but I don't know, that's on you. So next I'm gonna go ahead and throw on that number one and a half clip lever all the way open. And I'm gonna start trying to connect the side lane to the top. So I'm only gonna come up about a half inch from that previous line that we had set. And here you're not so much setting in no more guidelines, you're just kinda trying to connect the side lane to the top. But only keeping in mind that you're coming up, like I said, only a half inch high. And then once you're done there, you're gonna go ahead and throw on your number two guard, still keeping that lever all the way open. And like I said guys, we're doing the exact same thing that we did with that one and a half clip. This is the area or the point about where the head starts to round out. So you wanna be careful that you're not digging in the clipper too much until your top length. All you're doing is trying to connect the side to the top. So think of it as if you're sculpting upwards as if the head was a square, as if you look like SpongeBob and you're just kinda of coming straight up. Then we're just gonna do the exact same thing with that three guard, trying to connect the side to the top. Again guys, just going straight up. So if you wanna lay a comb down on the side, you see how I'm just kind of flaring out uh, as I reach the top of the head? That's kind of the direction that you wanna go for. Cause if not, you'll take off too much length off the top and it'll just kind of look more as if you're trying to create a full hawk effect. And then after this, if there's any more bulk that you need to kind of connect, you can go ahead and use your clipper over comb technique. So just go ahead and grab like a white comb to get rid of any bulk that's left behind. So again, just kind of set your uh, comb in, kind of bring it out as if you're trying to sculpt out a square shape. And uh, any hair that hangs outside of the comb is what you're gonna trim away. I do recommend you use a white comb just so you can better see the contrast between the comb and the hair. And by the way guys, all these steps that I am using, I will leave down in the description for y'all in written format so y'all can follow along that way if y'all like. And also I have links to all the tools and products that we are using in our videos. So if y'all like to purchase them through there, go ahead and do so. So now moving forward, we're gonna start with blending out our two guidelines that we set. First, starting off with this half guard and I'm gonna position that lever on that 3-4 spot. That 3-4 spot is a position right in between halfway and fully open. And I'm gonna start by blending out that top guy line and then work my way down. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and start blending it a little at a time until you start seeing it soften up. You'll notice that it's not gonna completely blend it out. It might leave like a little dark area uh, here and there, uh, above, right above, but you're not gonna go ahead and keep chasing that guy line because then you'll start taking the fade up too high. So just start blending exactly where that line starts and then anything that's left above will come back with the higher guard to finish blending it out. And also keep in mind guys that I do zero gap all my clippers and trimmers. This is just so that we can cut or so that your tools cut a lot closer to the skin. And it's more so utilized for uh, creating fades that start from skin uh, up into whatever length you want on top. It's just easier to fade out that that last bond line. So here you'll be able to notice the little dark areas that was left above. So for that, I'm gonna leave that lever in that same position, but next grabbing that number one guard to finish blending it out. And remember guys, you gotta kinda use that corner of the clipper, kinda utilizing your own intuition into creating that blend effect. You can't depend fully on the clipper. You gotta maneuver with your hand uh, in different angles the clippers you can better get into those dark areas to blend them out But just like anything as you progress and doing more fades with consistency You'll be able to kind of build a better eye for viewing these dark areas and better blending them out It's all gonna always take practice just like anything else guys And so now here we're left with our last guideline to blend out It's gonna take me three lever positions to blend this line out First starting with the clipper lever closed, 
and then I open it halfway and then all the way open until it's blended out. And because it takes me three lever positions, I'm gonna only focus on this small area from the ear to the temple area. And then once I blend that out, then I'll move back a section until we can blend it out. Keep Take no guys that in uh, some instances, so if you're dealing with thicker hair, it might take you four lever positions. So when you start with your first section, right there is when you'll take note, like, okay, I'm gonna need three or four lever positions for the rest of the line. I know a lot of people like using that baiting down method to where they create a guideline and then they blend it out as they progress up in the fade. And don't get me wrong, that's a really good method. A lot of barbers that are cut really well use that method. But for me, throughout the years, for some reason, I feel like that method uh, leaves me with more touch-up work in the end. And uh, this this method where I create the guidelines and then blend them out, uh, I, just, I feel like I don't need as much uh, touch-up work in the end. So I've, I've always stuck with this one. But I always do recommend everybody try several methods and uh, first start off with the one that makes the most sense to you and then just kind of progress from there so once you're done with that last guideline i'm gonna come in and do a little touch-up work for hers i'm uh i noticed i had some dark areas around here so i'm a, i went ahead and threw on that half clip and i opened the lever all the way open and then again i just used that corner of the clipper just to kind of better fine detail those areas out Then once you're done there, go ahead and grab your trimmers. And I first use them here in this forward motion just because it gets closer to the skin. And uh, I do this so that when I come back and take out the rest of the bottom of the hair with the trimmers regular in a regular position upright, uh, you'll, be be you'll be able to kind of see or distinguish a little faint line that is going to leave behind. And that little faint line, all it's going to do is serve as another guideline to show us how high to come up with our electric shaver. Then just follow that up with your electric shaver. And like I said, as you reach that little faint line that you had left behind, you're gonna kind of flare out with your shavers as they were a pair of trimmers or clippers uh, so you could better blend it into the fade. And for whatever reason, if you still feel like you left a little line behind, you can just come back in with your trimmers to just blend it right back out. And after this guys, my friend here, Michelle, does not like her bangs to kind of stick out forward. So I went ahead and threw on the number four guard with the lever open just to kind of taper out the front area so that it don't hang over her forehead as much. This is also gonna help when it comes to lining up your clients since you don't have that much hair hanging over. And then before doing my lineup, I like to spray some spritz just to blow dry it and freeze the hair into place so that it's not moving around when you set in your hard lines. And then I'm going to just go ahead and use my trimmer starting from the middle as I step back a little at a time just to kind of better see if I'm going straight across the forehead. And then once you're pretty confident with how your lineup looks with the trimmer, we can go ahead and start prepping our razor for our straight razor shave. I'm going to go ahead and grab a double edged razor, snap it in half, and I also snap off the edges of the razor so you can better slide it into your Turkish razor. These razors, guys, you can find our very own ones at betaculture.co if y'all like to check them out. We also have the swing lock ones if y'all prefer those type of razors. But then just apply some shaving gel, and then I use a napkin and I tuck it under the cape just to use that as an area to clean off any hair that I'm shaving. And then so I always shave downwards with the grain first just to kind of take off all the peach fuzz and also most of that excess shaving gel. And then I'll start detailing up against the hard lines just to better straighten them out as much as possible. And then for that longer lasting shave, you always want to shave against the grain just to get that much closer to the skin resulting in a longer lasting shave. And just make sure you're always using that opposite hand just to kind of create that tension on the skin to better help that razor slide across the skin. And for those people that ain't as confident with using the straight razor, I recommend you use it and practice without an actual razor in the razor holder until you build that confidence with actually having a razor on there. 
and while you're using your straight razor guys always 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 make sure that y'all shave the any hair that's left behind the ears y'all don't understand how bad that bugs me when i see barbers leave their clients with hair either right behind their ear or on their neck with those those little peach fuzz don't be that barber please please don't i also went ahead and detailed the eyebrows a little bit just to clean them up Oh, and by the way, guys, the code is FCGIFT. Make sure y'all type it in in all caps at checkout to get either a free cap or a free razor. Only one person can win, and congratulations to that winner. Let me know down in the comments if it's you that won. And then to style the hair, I like to dampen it a little bit, and then I'll apply my faded culture clay above, kind of really work it into the hair. And then I'll just blow dry the hair really well into the direction that I want the hair to dry. Uh, you want to use a vent brush go ahead and do so just to start kind of positioning the hair into the style that you like but that's pretty much it guys that was the before and here's the after on a skin fade with a scissor trim on top i hope y'all guys really enjoyed this tutorial and i hope y'all were able to take something home from it if y'all did please don't forget to mention it down in the comments and also don't forget to like the video also maybe feel free to share the video to anybody that y'all think might find these videos beneficial but with that being said, guys, my name is Sergio Barron. This is Faded Culture, and I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace.